Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria situated on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week so far and is looking forward to an amazing weekend. This class is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. There's lots of learning to be had in this class. We are focusing on the IELTS reading section and we're going to practice to get that perfect band nine score on your next IELTS exam. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there for the general IELTS Check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com. That's general IELTS help.com. We have the URLs here as well. Um, those websites have lots of amazing materials for you to practice, to interact, uh, including six original exams, a fully interactive course that's over 100 hours, and over 100 HD video lessons. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator, Welcome our members, Sammy, good to see you. Our websites look like this real quick while we wait for a few more members to join in. This is our Academic IELTS website with the blue background. We are an official British Council IELTS Test Registration Center and certified agents. And to join the premium package, click that big red button. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access and it doesn't really cost much at all compared to your IELTS exam. So it's well worth it. This is the general IELTS version of our website. Again, uh, click that big red button to join the premium package and get access to all of our wonderful materials. Welcome, Dibarak. Hi, June. Good morning. All right, everyone. So um, we have apps that power our websites, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help app. They link to their respective websites. You can follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore A help and G IELTS help. And if you have questions, you can send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Okay, everyone. So uh, we have classes uh, all week. We have classes tomorrow and on Saturday as well so make sure to join for that we'll have listening and writing and speaking coming up and now let's get into today's uh reading okay so today's reading starts with a list of headings question and list of headings question it's one of the scary ones for a lot of students, um, I find most students tend to complain about either the list of headings questions or the true, false, not given, yes, no, not given questions. These aren't actually that bad as long as you know what you're doing. So I'm going to give you some clear strategies today for the list of headings questions so you can do those uh, efficiently, effectively, and with list of headings questions, you really want to do a good job because list of headings questions uh, help you, help you a lot to figure out answers for other questions for that passage, okay? So you want to do a good job on those. All right, um, so before you go through the list of headings questions, uh, look at the title of the passage. That should always be your first step. So let's do that. Boom, there it is. All right. So, one word title and a picture. Picture is worth a thousand words, as they say. So, um, all right. The title of this passage is Mirages. Uh, so the pronunciation for the singular is mirage and for plural it's mirages. You can count them. Okay, so mirages. Okay. Okay. 
June says, sometimes we find even the correct answers of the list of headings are not that good as a summary for the paragraph. It should be, June. I usually find that they do make sense for the paragraph if you look at it carefully. So it should be. Okay. All right. So uh, mirages. So we read the title. We think about it. Uh, you have to ask what, why, how. So what is a mirage? Uh, members, what is a mirage? Dibarach. June, Nikhil, Sammy, Naveen, Carolina, what's a mirage? Okay, so always start with your critical thinking. That should be very quick in the real exam. That should only take you a matter of seconds, maybe 30 seconds. So <clears throat> what is a mirage? If you don't know, it's okay. Then in your mind, you have to say, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know this word. Okay, and it's okay to do that. Uh, if you do know, then answer it in a full, concise sentence, okay? Sammy says, a mirage is an optical illusion. Very good. That's exactly what it is, Sammy. It's an optical illusion that is created by atmospheric conditions, right? So if I want to be super scientific, if I know the answer to this, it is an optical illusion created by atmospheric conditions. Okay, very good, nice. Uh, optical, optics, meaning visual, right? If you're into cameras, photography, you'll definitely know the word optics. And illusion is kind of like a magic trick, okay? Uh, so it's something that doesn't make sense, okay? Optical illusion. All right. Now, um, why do we see mirages? So that would be the next question because obviously this paragraph is going to be dealing um, with these questions, right? If I'm an author and I'm writing an essay on a mirage or mirages, I will definitely include information about what it is, why is it, how does it work. So why do people see a mirage? Okay, Sammy says, I think it's a light reflections. Um, June says it's a refraction of light. Yeah, uh, reflection is a good word, Sammy. Refraction is an even better word, June. Uh, so it's the bouncing of light. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it is a refraction of light due to hot and cold uh, gradients. Yeah. Okay. If we want to get really technical again, Andre says maybe it has something to do with hot water. Andre, unfortunately for all those poor lost souls in the desert, it really doesn't have too much to do with water. That's kind of what we hope it is, but it's not what it is, unfortunately. Okay. Um, and how does it happen? So um, how do uh, people see a mirage? Okay. So think about the how question and always try uh, really hard to separate the why and the how. So when you're thinking about why it is, Okay, it's a refraction of light due to hot and cold gradients. Uh, how do people see a mirage? Um, don't just say, well, it's a refraction of light. So think about it differently. Uh, when you think about the how, students, always think about an example. So for how questions, uh, think of real examples, okay? So think of a real example of seeing a, a mirage, okay? So Andrew says it's an imagination. Yeah, so I would, so for me, it would be like um, a person is lost uh, in a hot uh, desert and um, they think they see water in the distance okay so that would be um my kind of 
example of a mirage. That's a really, really typical one. I think that many of us will agree that's often what we think of when we think of an example um, of a mirage. So a person is lost in a hot desert and they think they see some water in the distance on a hot day. Okay. So again, for the how question, think of an example and think of a typical example. IELTS usually does give very typical examples in the reading sections. Okay. Carolina says some kind of a hallucination almost. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so now we have a clear idea of a mirage, right? And we have that picture to help us. That picture is even there. It looks like a hot desert um, with a bit of water in the distance with some rocks, right? So we have that quote unquote illusion of the mirage. Now that we have this information and we're really focused, um, we can go back to the list of headings. Okay, a uh, list of headings, it's given to you um, before the question, okay? And uh, what you want to do with list of headings is definitely review it, even though you will have some false information, not all of the choices will be used. You should review list of headings before you read because you're looking at all of the possible titles of each paragraph, okay? So these are the possible titles of each paragraph, all right? Um, list of headings gives you the information of what the paragraph is about, okay? So let's talk about this list of headings, question strategies. Now I'm going to refer to list of headings as L O H list of headings, question strategies. So what I just said, a is always uh, read these before you read the passage. Okay. And always keep in mind that list of headings answers, uh, what each paragraph is about simply put the topic of the paragraph okay um, and it's important to remember it's not the uh, details uh, like explanations and examples okay that can be tricky that can uh, lead to incorrect answers okay so your next step as you read them or as you review these uh, before the passage is, uh, as you re review these before the passage, uh, paraphrase them as best as you can. So if you're having difficulty with some, that's okay, all right? Um, but do try to paraphrase them. So windows, mirrors, and hallucin <laughs> hallucinations. So um, try to paraphrase these for me. So is there another way to say windows, mirrors, and uh, hallucinations? I'm going to try to paraphrase that, get some idea of this. So windows, I don't know, maybe glass, mirrors, reflection, uh, hallucinations. I mean, we just use the word illusions. Okay, so glass, reflection, illusions, windows, mirrors, hallucinations, that works, okay. Um, is it perfectly accurate? No, but it gives me some other ideas of these words, okay. Sammy says windows, reflections, and imagination. Sammy, that works as well, okay, that's good. Um, okay, how the brain processes mirages. Uh, paraphrase that one for me. Okay, we're going to do a couple. We won't do all of them. Uh, just a couple so you get the idea here. Okay. So, how the brain processes mirages. Paraphrase that in your own words. 
students practicing paraphrasing regularly every day when you're learning a language in your own language when you're studying is an extremely useful skill okay paraphrasing is some is a, a skill that you want to develop regularly right okay so how the brain processes mir mirages uh, by learning good paraphrasing you're able to see the world from multiple perspectives and that really gives you an edge Apollo uh, says how our neural system deals with the mirage I like Apollo I think that works um, June says how the mind creates optical illusions I really like that too uh, the way our mind creates these illusions Okay, um, sure, yeah, very good. Uh, Nick Hill says the way the brain interprets an illusion. Definitely, okay. Now, the reason you're doing this kind of paraphrasing is because it is very unlikely that you will see these words in the paragraphs verbatim. That would be too easy. Verbatim means exactly these words. Uh, the IELTS examiners are doing exactly what you're doing. They are paraphrasing this information in the body paragraphs. So by paraphrasing, you're giving yourself a second chance to match the correct list of heading with the correct paragraph. Okay, so temperature gradients, um, differences in Celsius. Okay, uh, filmable, but ultimately up to the mind, uh, video uh, can be caught on video or can be caught on camera or can be captured on video, uh, but really up to the way we think. Okay, so that's the paraphrasing. All right, everybody's doing a good job there. Uh, you can, of course, continue with the rest of these in your own time at home after the class. Okay, I encourage that. It's good homework. So uh, paraphrase or find another list of headings uh, pa uh, passage in our uh, exams. We have several and try this. Okay, so that's what you want to do. So you want to paraphrase. And then you begin to read, okay? So you read and uh, you read each paragraph. Now list of headings is interesting because it is the only question type that you should solve while reading, okay? So every other question you should wait until you finish reading to give the answers except for list of headings, okay? So L-O-H, list of headings, uh, is the only, and I emphasize that, is the only question that you should solve while uh, reading. Every other question you should solve after you have uh, read the passage. Okay, so keep that in mind. The reason why is because you do it at the end of each paragraph, okay? So let me show you and then we'll move through nice and smoothly. So this is a reading class, everyone. So make sure to read with me, okay? Follow here with me, okay? All right, um, here we go. Yeah, Depika, hallucin hallucinations and illusions and delusions, that's a third one, delusions, are technically different. Okay, so, and it's important to learn those differences, Depika. but right now we're going to just stick to this and then we'll go through it and it'll make sense, okay? So here we go, so read with me. A man is walking in a desert in dire need of water. Up ahead, he sees what seems to be a lake or a pond. Excited, he runs towards the source of water. He gets closer. But the water disappears. He looks again and the water reappears. But it is in the distance once again. 
He runs once more, but his efforts are futile. The water is not there. All right. Well, um, so now for list of headings, um, we want to ask, what is this paragraph about? Okay. And only use the information that's given. So this is your magic trick here. Um, what? So ask yourself. What is this paragraph about? And answer in a very concise way. Okay, so you have to answer in a concise way. So let's try this paragraph. So what is paragraph A about? Okay. So how would you answer that, members, in a very concise way? Okay, so Nick Hill says, it's about a man seeing mirages or optical illusions. Uh, Nick Hill, even con more concise, a man seeing mirages, okay? Uh, June says, an example for the experience of a mirage. Um, yeah, or <laughs> Carolina says, a lost man being tricked by an optical illusion. Yeah, a lost man experiencing an optical illusion, okay? Um, I like Nick Hills. I think uh, we can keep it that simple. It's a man um, experiencing a mirage. And we can even say a lost man, okay? A man lost in the desert experiencing a mirage. That would be your best uh, answer that is concise, it contains all of the information that's necessary, okay? So don't put any of your own ideas behind it, only use the actual information, that's very, very important. All right, now, when you have this, okay, so then choose the list of heading which matches closest to your answer, okay? Keep in mind, the biggest mistake that many students or candidates, IELTS candidates, let's be specific, uh, make with list of headings is that they uh, search for the answers in the uh, list of headings list before thinking on their own. That's a big mistake. Do not do this. Very strongly emphasize the do not do this. Okay, so always think first, then choose. Okay, very important. All right, so now let's take a look at this and let's see um, which of these matches, okay? All right, so a man lost in the desert seeing some mirages, okay? So windows, mirrors, and hallucinations, meh, how the brain, temperature gradients, filmable but ultimately up to the mind, a common experience of a mirage, Okay, um, the need for water, the cause of mirages, true hallucinations, an adventurer sees something, the difference between two phenomena, the fallible human mind. Um, which one of these do you think is closest to a man um, lost in the desert uh, sees a mirage? Which one is the closest? Unfortunately, a lot of people are getting this wrong, and I'm going to explain why, okay? Okay, June says it's got to be nine. Andre says it's got to be nine, and Andre and June are correct. 
Why has Paulo uh, Andre on the first one, Carolina, Sammy, and Hans made a mistake? Okay, so the correct answer for this one, students, is IX. It is number nine. Okay, um, why, why did everybody make a mistake with number five? Okay. Why was why why did you make a mistake? So in the IELTS when you're studying it's very important to figure out why you made a mistake so that you don't make that mistake again in the future. So why did you make a mistake? Okay. Uh, um Paulo says didn't read all the options. No. That's not it. Uh, June says it's not a common one. That's not it either. Andre, too much detail. Maybe you're right. I'm not sure if you're right there. Okay, anybody else? Paulo says nine is closer than five. Carolina says it doesn't say mirage in the text. Carolina, you're close. It doesn't say it's a common experience. Okay, how many of you have actually been lost in the desert and seen water in the distance? I haven't, thank God. Okay, hopefully it never happens to me. All right, how many of you have had that experience of being lost in the desert and seeing water in the distance? Okay, Sammy says, not me, right? So yeah, we've seen it in movies and maybe read about it in books, but it's not actually a common experience, right? So remember what I said is uh, do not put your own information into the context. Only use what is given. That's very, very important. Okay? So, very, very important. All right? Do not include your own thoughts into uh, choosing the answer. Only use what is given in the uh, paragraph. Okay, the example here is paragraph A. It's easy to jump to that conclusion, but it's not given. Okay. Um, paragraph A does not state that uh, being lost in the desert and seeing a mirage is a common experience. Okay? doesn't say that. I think a lot of you thought it. It's easy to think that. I can see why you got kind of tricked into thinking that but you should not do that, okay? Again, um, IELTS is a test of academic thinking, and when you're doing research in university or in college, it's extremely dangerous to put forward ideas or make assumptions that are not actually represented by your research, okay? And you will learn this uh, again and again in your university studies. So IELTS is already kind of testing you for this kind of logic or logical thinking, okay? Or flawed logical thinking, all right? I hope that makes sense, okay? So let's keep going and we'll get the hang of it, all right? No worries. So the correct answer uh, for that one was number nine. It was IX, okay? Not five, D. Barak. It was IX, okay? An adventurer sees something. A man lost in the desert sees a mirage. An adventurer sees something, okay? The man lost in the desert is the adventurer. He is the adventurer. And seeing the mirage is seeing something. Okay, uh, let's go with B. So the man is not going mad. Let's keep reading, okay? The man is not going mad. In fact, there's nothing wrong with him or his vision at all. What he, see, what he has seen is called a mirage. Mirages are optical illusions caused 
by atmospheric conditions which play tricks on the brain's visual system. Importantly, they are not hallucinations. Hallucinations are fabrications while mirages are a result of phenomenon in the real world. Another way to look at the difference between hallucinations and mirages is that mirages will be seen by any observer. Hallucinations, conversely, exist only in the mind of the person hallucinating. Okay, so now I want to ask, what is this paragraph about? So what is paragraph B about? Okay. In your opinion, what is paragraph B about? Okay, don't include your own information, just what you read, be concise, be clear. Paulo says mirages are not hallucinations. Carolina says the difference between hallucinations and mirages. Mm -hmm. June, I like it. Mirages versus hallucinations, very concise, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a super concise way to uh, answer that question. What is paragraph B about? Mirages versus hallucinations. Yeah, the definitions for each. Okay, good. So, um, which one of these matches closest? Windows, mirrors, and hallucinations? Eh, how the brain processes mirages? Meh, it's one-sided. Uh, temperature gradients, filmable, but ultimately up to the mind, a common experience of the mirage. And by the way, the more you do this, the faster you'll get for the next paragraphs. Okay. A common experience of a mirage, the need for water, the cause of mirages, true hallucinations, an adventurer sees something, the difference between two phenomenon, a fallible human mind. Which one is the best answer? Hans says it's X, um, Paulo, Sammy, Nick, he'll agree, and you're all right, yeah. Mirage is a phenomenon, hallucination is a phenomenon, and we're looking for the difference. And many of you actually use the word difference. So if you have that word in one of your choices, really pay attention, okay? The difference between two phenomenon, absolutely. And that's the correct answer. And that is our example. They always give you one example uh, for list of headings. And if you get the example correct, you can feel confident that you're taking the right steps for this uh, question type. Okay, so X is the correct answer for paragraph B. It's given to us. It's right. Well done. Okay. All right. Let's keep moving. So C. Okay. Um, while the man walking in the desert anecdote is a popular mirage. Popular mirage narrative. The most common mirage in everyday life actually takes place on long, straight, flat highways on hot, sunny days. Driving along such a highway on such a day, it is common to see what looks like a puddle of water on the road in the distance. But once that point is reached, the puddle is gone and is instead located further in the distance. What's going on here? Okay, so what is paragraph C about? And now many of you will be like, aha, Eureka, right? So... What is paragraph C about? And I bet everybody will get it correct this time. Okay. Hans says the experience of mirages. Yeah, you could say that, Hans. Um, Paulo says, oh, it's a common mirage experience. Ha ha. Okay. Yeah, common 
Mirage Experience. Okay. And uh, Carolina agrees. Yeah. So I bet everybody's going to get it correct this time. So which one is the correct answer? Drum roll, please. And everybody will get it right, I'm sure. Andre says, oh, now it's number five, right? Okay, so uh, in the real IELTS exam, I'm sure many of you would be like, oh, okay, it's a common experience of a mirage. Um, and then uh, you would be like, all right, so the first paragraph is going to be something different and then change it, which is fine. It's okay to do that, but be really, really careful. It's better to just get them correct in a sequence. Yeah, so uh, in your answer sheet for uh, paragraph C, you would now just put V Roman numeral number five and then move on to paragraph D. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to move along nicely. And now you really get the hang of it and get all these correct. Okay. So let's look at D again. Read with me. Here we go. So the cause of mirages is the difference in heat between the ground and the air. Tarmac, the surface material of highways, can get very hot in the summer and release heat, raising the temperature of the air immediately above the tarmac. The air higher up is much cooler, so there is a sharp temperature gradient or rate of change in the air above the highway. It is known from physics that light is refracted or bent differently through air at different temperatures. The sharp temperature gradient in the air immediately above the highway causes the light rays to bend upwards towards the cooler, denser air. Because the human visual system interprets all light rays as being straight, which is generally true, we interpret these bent rays as originating from the ground. What is seen on the road in the distance is simply a reflection of the sky on the ground, which from afar looks precisely like a puddle of water in the middle of the road. Okay, um, so what is this paragraph about? Okay, so we've read par this paragraph, very scientific here. It's an explanation, clearly, um, in a concise and clear way. And when you're doing this at home, students, write it down, okay? For each paragraph, write down your answer, then look at the paragraph, okay? So... Note, um, when practicing this at home, write down your answer for each paragraph um, before you look at the list of heading options, okay? All right, so Ken Fambao says it's the cause of mirages. It's basically your scientific explanation for a mirage, right? Um, Hans uh, Andriantos uh, agrees, yeah. So it's basically the cause. Uh, June says it's the mechanism of temperature gradients causing the mirage. Okay, good. So let's see if we can, um, if we can find... Uh, the closest match for a scientific explanation for the cause of a mirage, okay? So uh, here we go. Um, windows, mirrors, nope. How the brain processes mirages, maybe. Uh, temperature gradients, uh, that's part of it, right? That's part of the explanation. Uh, filmable, but ultimately up to the mind. A common experience the need uh, for water, the cause of mirage, uh, true hallucinations, uh, an adventure sees something, the difference between two phenomena, the fallible uh, human mind. Um, what do you think is the best answer uh, for this? Okay, what is the best answer for this?
Yeah. The cause of a mirage, right? So temperature gradient is part of that. How the brain processes mirages is a part of that. So this plus this equals this. Um, this is what the paragraph is about. These are explanations. And this is the exact reason why it's so important that you read uh, the full uh, paragraph answer on your own first and then choose, okay? Otherwise, it's easy to make mistakes. It's an academic IELTS exam. It's testing your academic thinking. So the correct answer here is uh, five. Okay, that was for paragraph C, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, or sorry, that was for D. Yeah, so it's seven. Okay, so seven. There we go. All right, uh, let's keep going. Let's keep moving along. Okay, so far, so good. So far, so good. Okay, nicely done. Now we're on to, we got a couple more paragraphs and we're going to do it. Um, okay, here we go. Let's read together. E. That humans see the phenomenon as a puddle of water is not a coincidence, however. It is the result of a rapid problem-solving process in the brain, which attempts to make sense of conflicting phenomena. Since humans are not accustomed to seeing non-straight light rays, the brain must make sense of them as best it can. Water on the highway is not the only explanation for what the mind sees ahead. A window pane or a mirror may be on the road instead. If there was a large mirror on the road, for example, the visual phenomenon would be identical. The driver would see a reflection of the sky on the road in the distance. So why is it that we always interpret the mirage as water on the road and not a mirror in the road or something else? It is because the brain, without consciously thinking, makes the best inference it can. The average person in their catalog of experiences does not have a real non-mirage experience of seeing a mirror in the middle of the highway. Conversely, the average person does have a real experience of seeing a puddle on the highway. Any sufficiently rainy day will produce this effect. The brain compares the probabilities of these two and other possibilities and concludes that the phenomenon must be a puddle of water. Knowing that the water is not, in fact, there does nothing to dispel us from the visual impression that water is on the highway. The brain's visual machinery is not subject to the logic of the rest of the brain. No matter how hard a person tries to unsee the mirage, it will always be there. Okay, uh, what is this paragraph about? So paragraph E, what is it about? What does it explain? Uh, Maxim says it's mind games caused by mirages. Okay, um, yeah, it's not bad, Maxim. I think there's a simpler way to say it, a more concise way. Andre says it's about mirrors. I don't think it's about mirrors, Andre. I think that's a piece of information given in the paragraph, but it's not about that. Uh, Fadhil, very good. So Fadhil says it's how the brain interprets a mirage. Very good, Fadhil. I agree. That's the best answer, right? So uh, Sammy says how the human brain imagines the mirage. Uh, Nick Hill says, how the brain processes mirage. Uh, D. Barak, I think you came late to the class, and that's why you're jumping the gun. Um, don't think about the answer, okay? That's not the correct way to do list of headings questions. 
Think about your own answer and then match it to the list of headings. Don't think about the answers because if you're thinking about the answers before you process the information on your own first, you will make mistakes in your actual IELTS exam. So, um, D. Barak, think about the answer in your own head first, okay? Answer the question to yourself, what is this paragraph about? And then look for the matching answer in the list of headings, okay? It's very important, all right? That's why you see all of the other uh, members are trying to think about a way to concisely conclude the paragraph, okay? Uh, Deepika says, how the brain works for a mirage, okay? Very good, Deepika. All right, so let's look for that. So how the brain uh, functions to figure out uh, a mirage, okay? Uh, which one of these? So which one of these is the closest match to how the brain um, understands the mirage? What is the closest match? And I bet you'll get it. And Dibarak, if you answer on your own first, you will get it too. But otherwise you won't if you're just trying to jump um, to the answers. Okay. Yeah, very good, Sammy. Very good, Andre. Very good, Maxim. Fadhil, Carolina, no surprise that you got it because those match with your answers. So it's how the brain processes a mirage. Yeah, exactly. It tries to make sense of it by matching it with its most known experience, which is seeing puddles of water on the road. So the correct answer there is number two. So when you're doing these correctly, you can see that, oh yeah, of course, I can get the correct answers, no problem. When you're doing a list of headings incorrectly, this passage is a brilliant example of how you can get a lot of them wrong, okay? And a lot of people are like, well, it's not fair, it's really difficult, but when you're doing it correctly, I bet a lot of you are thinking now like, oh yeah, they're not actually that bad as long as I'm using correct logic, okay, right? Okay, um, so let's do the last paragraph. We'll finish that one off. Uh, F, here we go. Um, read with me. Interestingly, mirages can actually be captured on film because the refracted light rays really are forming an image on the road. What the false image is mistaken for, however, is entirely up to the interpretation of the human mind. Yeah, nobody says it's water. It could be a mirror, it could be a piece of glass, right? It could be jelly, it could be a million things. Um, all right, some silver. Okay, so uh, F, one more time. Interestingly, mirages can actually be captured on film because the refracted light rays really are forming an image on the road. What the false image is mistaken for, however, is entirely up to the interpretation of the human mind. Um, what is this paragraph about? So what is this paragraph telling you as a conclusion? Yeah, so Ahan says mirages are filmable. Uh, Depika says mirages are filmable, sorry. Han says mirages on film. Paulo says mirages can be filmed. Yeah, but it's really up to the viewer to figure out what it is, right? Um, yeah, so very good. Mirages can be filmed in the last part and interpreted by humans, right? Interpretation of the human mind. So mirages are filmed. Yeah, very good, June. So June says it's filmable and the mind interprets it in its own way, okay? So which one of these is the closest match? So which one matches the closest to, it can be filmed, um, but it's really up to our thinking. Which one is the closest? Uh, Carolina says it's number four, filmable, ultimately up to the mind. Fadhil agrees that it's number four. I agree that it's number four. I think you guys are all doing a fantastic job now. Okay, number four it is, yeah. All right, very good. So that is how you do list of headings. Now that you know these list of headings questions and their answers, 
now you'll have a much better chance of figuring out the rest of the questions in the paragraph or in the passage because you know what information is located where. So again, um, here we have a short sentence completion answer. Uh, this um, pa is test number five in our exams, and it's passage number two, I think. Let me just check. Okay. So, oh, sorry, it's passage three. Okay. So this is exam number five, uh, passage number three. Again, for all of you who... Uh, have access, you will find it in your premium course at aehelp.com with all of the other exams and videos and so on. Uh, you can get those by joining our premium package, clicking that big uh, red button. I'll leave the rest of the questions for this passage to you. I hope you enjoyed this class, students. And remember, magic happens in your brain, not on the test paper. So your goal is to use your brain first and figure out that you're not seeing water in the distance, but it is just a mirage, okay? In university, you have to use that thinking. You have to use your logic and not be tricked by optical illusions. So uh, list of headings, always read them before you read the passage. Uh, think about what each paragraph is about. Uh, give the answer yourself first first okay these are the only questions that you should solve while you're reading every other question you should solve after the passage i hope you enjoyed this class everyone um paulo says yeah let's study because the test isn't a mirage it's real exactly so don't let your mind be tricked um by its desires right it's the idea all right, everyone, uh, coming up in about 30 minutes, I will be back with um, listening practice, part one, part two. So hang around for that. That will be an all chat class. Everybody will be able to join in on the chat. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria for now, but hopefully I will see all of you uh, shortly and uh, we'll continue on. Thanks and see you soon. Bye.